All right. Well, we are glad you guys are in church today. And I want to spend some time talking for a few minutes about the tale of two kinds. The tale of two kinds. Christmas is truly the season of kindness. How many of you agree with that? Okay, some of you don't even live that. You just receive, receive, receive. Kindness is about giving, right? But I have found that people are usually happier, more patient. They're more kind. They're more respectful at the stores. Wait, is that really true? It's not really true. It seems like this happy day, this holy day that we're celebrating does not bring out the inner elf. It often brings out the inner demon. I mean, there used to be something called stroller courtesy, where if you saw a stroller coming by, you would hold the door for that person. Come on, any men of chivalry here? You'd let, let them in? Okay, only four of you are men of chivalry. That's great to know. Right? You, you hold the door. Now it seems like let me cut off the stroller before they get to the door. I love looking for opportunities to hold a door or to say hi to someone or to engage a conversation. Now you find out how crazy people get around the holidays. Anybody seen some nut jobs lately besides your pastor? Come on, I know Hicksville loves me still. Fight over a parking space. You ever seen some ignoranus? There's a parking space two further away, but they want that one, and they're fighting an 80-year-old woman to get it. Isn't it sad how our cultures drifted from kindness and respect? Getting upset because someone got the last gift on the shelf. And you see people go tirades and they hit social media or they run here, run there, and they make a scene at the local store. Friend, that is not kindness. And in this season called Christmas, the church should be the most kind people on the planet. We ought to be the ones that are kinder than anybody else. Kindness is defined as considerate, helpful, or compassionate. Remember, last Sunday, you all, all got elfed in church. Come on, look at somebody and say, I got elfed in church. See, showing kindness may look foolish, may often be misread, but I believe kindness still matters. I believe kindness still makes a difference in people's lives. Let your inner elf come out this Christmas. Let people see the joy in your spirit, the passion in your heart, and the love you have for all humanity. This is not time for the church to get all divisive, to post things about what you don't agree with. It's funny, I posted something on Instagram this week about stop getting offended, and someone says, I'm offended that you celebrate Christmas. I'm offended you don't celebrate Christmas. Come on! I mean, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, the triumphant Savior that came into this world. He was so kind. The Bible says rich in mercy. That if he can be that kind to us, we should be kind to everyone around us. So let your inner elf come out. Come on, look at somebody and say, for the elf of it. I want to check out this morning two stories in the Bible about kindness. The first story in the Bible is about rejected kindness. The other story is about received kindness. The first is negative. The second is positive. First story, King Nahash. His son Hanun becomes king in his place. David, the great king over all of Israel, says, I'm going to show loyalty to Hanun just like his father, Nahash, was always loyal to me as king. David then sends ambassadors to carry this message. But when they get to Hanun's commanders, the commanders say to him, do you really think these men are coming here to honor your father? No, David has sent them to spy out the city so they can conquer it. Rejected kindness. These ambassadors misread David's kindness. 
David was wanting to show kindness to this new king because he always had the loyalty of his new king's father. Has anyone ever done something for someone and it was misread? Anybody ever been kind to somebody and that kindness was thrown in your face? That issue, man, I didn't know. They're only being kind because they want to get something out. Has your kindness ever caused confusion? You doing something good for someone, why would you do that? Why would you do that for me? A stranger. How many of you did your random act of kindness this week and you bought somebody their Starbucks or their Dunkin' Donuts drink and they're like, why would you do this for me? See, there are some people that no matter how kind you are, it will never be good enough. You got to realize this from the very get-go. Because your kindness will often be misread and unappreciated. Can I get a witness? See, I think even though all of that, all of that's going to be misread and people aren't going to always understand, I think we should choose kindness anyway. What do you think, church? I think we should choose to be kind to those who are in our corner and those who are sitting on the opposite side of the corner. I think we ought to be kind in everything that we do. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why should we be kind to that person? For the alphabet. Just be kind for the alphabet. It doesn't matter how people treat you. Live kind. Be kind. Speak kind. Here's what happens. The group of Nahum's commanders confused this kindness. They captured King David's men. They shave off half of their beards and then cut holes in the back of their pants so their buttocks is exposed. That was seen as dishonorable in the Old Testament. That for a man to have any part of his body exposed would seem disgraceful. So the king's men's message back to David was, we don't care who you are. You tried to be kind, but we will disgrace you. There are always going to be some people like that. Come on, church. That you're going to be kind. You're going to be compassionate. And they're going to try and disgrace you. Have you ever been disgraced by someone, hurt by someone that you were being good to? that you were doing the right thing for. 2 Samuel 10.4 carries this story. It's so crazy when you read it. But at the end, the kindness of King David was rejected by another king. Rewind. Second story. David is pondering his life. He's looking over his leadership and he asks this question. Is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone who I could show kindness to for Jonathan's sake. Remember, Jonathan is Saul's son, the former king and best friend to King David. Both Jonathan and Saul are now dead. One of King David's men, Ziba, ends up telling him that there's one of Joseph's sons still alive. His name, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. I mean, imagine that as your name. Hi, what's your name? Mephibosheth. Sounds strong. Mephibosheth, though, was crippled in both his legs. As a child, his caregiver panicked in one part of the story and ran and dropped him, and he landed on his head. Mephibosheth then lost capacity below his waist. David then calls in Mephibosheth, and when Mephibosheth enters into the king's presence, he kneels and bows low before the king. David says this to Mephibosheth, I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. Now catch this. King David had the right intention in both stories. He wanted to show kindness to the next generation because he wanted to show honor to the previous generation. So he wants to show kindness. Here's Mephibosheth's response. Who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Think about this story. Think about the two stories. In one, they misread and rejected the king's kindness. In the second... Mephibosheth receives the king's kindness. Why did David do this? Did he do it because he had to? 
Did he do it because it was, while well, I'm being forced to? No. The king did this because he had integrity and character. And when you have integrity and character, you will find ways to be kind even to your enemies. You will find ways to be kind to those around you. In the first story, David's kindness was rejected. The end result was not good for that people group. In the second story, David's kindness was received. The end result, Mephibosheth was given everything that ever belonged to Saul. I mean, you may not realize this, but Saul was the wealthiest of the wealthiest. He was king over all of God's people. He had land, property, possessions, and servants. And all of that was given to Mephibosheth because he received the kindness of King David. But let me tell you something. When you receive the kindness of someone, you get the blessing that comes with it. You get the blessing that comes from God delivered to you. How you perceive or receive kindness matters. This Christmas, we want to challenge you to choose kindness. There are more than enough reasons to not be kind to people. There are more than enough reasons for you to be upset and angry at people. Come on now, church. You can find a million reasons to be angry at people, but I can give you one reason to be kind to people, because God has been kind to you. And if God has been kind to you, then we should be compelled to be kind to those around us. This Christmas choose kindness. And I know there's going to be some awkward moments this Christmas. Come on, anybody have any family issues? Come on, can I get a witness or something? Come on, Hicksville. Come on, Comat. Like, there's going to be some of those, man, I haven't seen Aunt Betty in 45 years, and she's coming this Christmas. Oh, the last time she came, she tore. There's going to be some of those. You may hear some things from friends that drive you insane. They may say some things to you, but be kind. Now, don't confuse kindness with being a pushover. Don't confuse kindness with being a pushover. But for the elf of it, spread some Christmas cheer this year and be kind, be considerate, be generous, and be compassionate. Because here's what I believe. For the Christian, it should not be a grind to be kind. If it is difficult for us to be kind, there's a spirit check that has to take place. If we're not being kind to those around us, there's something wrong on the inside of our life. But yet, those who defy kindness usually blame everybody else for why they're not kind. If you're bitter, get over it. If you're angry, push through it. But choose kindness this Christmas season. Because kindness was best seen when God sent his son to this planet for you and for me. And if God could do that for me, I ought to be kind to those around me. The Bible teaches that love is patient and kind. I mean, let that drill in for a moment, Church Unleashed. Let that sink into your spirit. Love is patient and kind. I love the use of the conjunction there and because it joins love and kind or patience and kindness together. Because you cannot be kind without a little patience. <sighs> you know what I've discovered on the least kind? when I'm the least patient. Come on, church. When I feel like I, I, I have to check myself, why am I being like this? Why am, There's something causing a disruption on the inside. See, when we truly love someone, it's easy to be kind. When you've been loved by someone, it's also easy to be kind. But why for the elf of it is it so hard to be kind? Why is it so hard for us to be kind? First, I think most people aren't kind enough because they don't get recognition for their private kindness. People will criticize you publicly, but they seldom praise you publicly. They'll criticize you, but they won't compliment you. When you don't get the recognition you think you deserve for being kind, it, we clam up. 
Well, no one noticed. I brought in that fruitcake last Christmas and no one said anything. I was at work late. I did this and no one even said great job. I finished that project on Christmas Eve and no one said thank you. Listen, I am not kind and we should not be kind for recognition's sake. We should be kind for God's sake. He's been kind with us. That translates to me being kind with those around me. I also think it's hard to be kind because we get too busy or consumed with things that we lose our focus on what really matters. I mean, isn't that easy during Christmas, church? That we can so easily lose our focus. Why are we celebrating Christmas? Is it so we can go into credit card debt to make sure everyone gets every gift that they want? No, we celebrate Christmas because it's the birthday of the Lord. It's the birthday of our Savior. And we're reminded that that Christmas morning meant something and still means something. We ought to celebrate that with great kindness. Don't get too busy. Don't run here and run there and go all bent out of shape. See, when we were growing up, there were many times on Christmas that we didn't get gifts on Christmas. We got gifts after Christmas. Because in a single parent home that struggled financially, my mother made a wise financial decision and said, the sales are really December 26th. Now, as a kid, I did not understand that because they felt everybody else. But as an adult now, I applaud my mother because she chose food, a roof over my head, more than the toys that we would get later. And our culture has radically moved from that because we'll give everything at the expense of ourselves. And there's a point we've got to use the wisdom of God. Don't be too busy or consumed. I think also we're not as kind because we live in the age of comparison. I mean, social media has killed this game. Because everyone compares to somebody else. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'll be honest, as a pastor, I, I can't watch every other pastor's church. Because you know what I am saying? Wow. I wish we had that, and I wish we could do that. I saw somebody brought in a live nativity, like animals and everything in our church. I was like, we can't even get a donkey. (laughs) Come on now. (laughs) Incidentally, I brought a donkey into church one time many years ago. Funny, I rode the donkey in. Once the donkey got to the front, they forgot to put on the chute, and it just (laughs) right there in the front of the church. a stinky situation. (laughs) I also think it's hard to be kind because we often think we deserve more than what we actually get. And so in response, we're not as kind as we think we ought to be. But as Christians, it ought to be easier for us to be kind, shouldn't it? Because God has poured out his incredible favor and kindness on us. I mean, just think within yourself, do you feel blessed this Christmas? I mean, you may not have everything you you want or everything you think you deserve, but are you breathing today? Do you have eyes that could see with? Do you have at least one ear that you can hear the message with? (laughs) Feet you can walk with. You may be losing strength, whatever it may be, but is there a reason that you could say, God, thank you. Thank you for your blessings. Be kind to someone. Think twice before saying it, texting it, emailing it, or posting it. Choose to show restraint. Be kind. Hold that door for somebody. Buy someone's groceries. Start with mine. Be great. (laughs) Let someone go in front of you at the store. Don't judge someone when they have 13 items in a 12 items or less line. (laughs) I'm preaching to myself. You get it? My self. Put some money in the Salvation Army tin or the Teen Challenge tin as they're ringing that bell. They do good service. We to support those who do good. Let's, as a church, share kindness this Christmas. Don't let the busyness of the Christmas season rob you of the joy of Christmas. 
Here's what I've learned. It costs you nothing to be kind. But it could cost you everything when you're unkind. Choose kindness. Let's be honest. It would be easier at time to just fly off the handle. Come on, how many in the last month, two, three months, have felt like, man, I would love to just let someone have a piece of my mind? Come on, just Hicksville, come on, come on, raise your hand if you felt like that. Come on, just put it up, hold it up. Now just look around. Look at all the people that need Jesus today. <laughs> right? Come on, Hicksville, I know there's no hands up in Hicksville. But honestly, it would be so much easier, right, to do that. But easy doesn't always make it right, church. And there's a lot of people choosing easy instead of right. Do what is right. It should not be a grind for us as Christians to be kind. I also know this. Goodwill is still God's will. Goodwill is still God's will. The cry of the shepherds when they saw baby Jesus was this. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward man. The better translation of that to many theologians would be this. On earth, peace among men of goodwill. In other words, goodwill is what brings peace. Good's will, goodwill is what restores hearts. Goodwill is what rebuilds broken families. It's goodwill. People with good intentions bring peace wherever they go. That simply means that those without good intention also bring destruction wherever they go. They have a long line of people and dreams and goals that they've deconstructed. But I believe goodwill is still God's will. Because goodwill can only come from above. See, in our nature, I don't know if you're like this, but in our nature, I want it to be about me. Am I the only one? I, I really, I, I think we don't admit this enough. But we are selfish people. We're really selfish. It's about me. It's about my drive, my desire, my goals, my aspirations. See, in our human nature, there's hardwired within us this selfishness desire. But in our spirits, it's all about goodwill. Goodwill toward God and goodwill toward people. But there is a difference between being nice and being kind. Nice is because you have to. Come on. The season of giving. All right, I'm just going to be nice to Grandma Bertha. I'm just going to be nice to them. It'll get me through the next 45 minutes. I'm just going to be nice. I have to. I have to suck it up to my boss. I have to just smile to keep peace in my home. I have to. Kindness is not because you have to. Kindness is because you want to. Kindness is because you get to. I'm just going to show grace to that person who does not deserve it because God showed grace to me when I did not deserve it. I'm going to be kind to those around me no matter what they do to me, whatever they throw at I'm going to help that struggling family instead of judging the struggling family. I want to strengthen this friendship. I want to buy that secret Santa gift for that person I cannot stand. And yes, it's not going to be a secret because I'm going to put my name on it because I want them to know it came from me because I can't stand them. Come on, church. <laughs> Have you ever thought about doing that on secret Santas when you draw the name of the person you do not like and you're like, oh my God. But goodwill is about being kind. For the alphabet, be kind to someone this Christmas. And this is important. Don't misread someone's intentions. This is hard sometimes. That's what happened with Nahum's ambassadors. They misread King David's intentions. The result was not good because King David ended up murdering many of them and overthrew them. There are three famous women in the world that you all know and you all experience, you all love, and you all hate. Here they are. Miscommunication. <laughs> Misunderstanding. And misleading. Those three ladies have destroyed more marriages, more homes, more churches, more businesses, more things than anybody else in all of human existence. 
Now think about now. I'm not throwing the women under the bus. Just, just I, okay. I got them. Mm. Okay, I'm moving on. No one can judge the reason behind what someone does, what someone says. Only God can. And yet, have you ever tried to play God in those scenarios? I know some of you are still trying to take this message seriously, just looking at me. <laughs> but have you ever tried to play God in those situations? I know exactly what they were doing. I know what they were thinking. Do you? Because I don't. I mean, sometimes I think the same thing. Why well, not? And then you have to say, wait a minute, I'm not God. Anytime I try and play God, I make mistakes. I make poor decisions. I say stupid things. Come on, church. But when I allow God to be God, and you know what? I'm not going to read into why you did what you did. I'm just going to trust that, hey, it was the right intentions. See, over the years, I've spoken to many people who say this. They only did this because, or they had to do it, or they were forced to apologize to me. But I cannot, I cannot read the mind of someone else. I can't do it. But for the alphabet, stop trying to be God. There is only one God, and we ought to see the good in everyone and everything. Trust that not everyone is out to get you. I, I can't tell you how our culture has created the victim mentality that everyone's out to tear me down, beat me down, rip me apart, and doesn't want me to excel. It doesn't matter if that is true. You have the one that is for you, that is pushing you forward. Stop hearing all the lies, the manipulation of the enemy saying, no one's for you. All you need is one. You plus God are a majority. You don't need anybody else or anything else in your corner. See, Christmas reminds us that if you look for the good like the shepherds did, you will find it. If you seek to bring your gifts like the wise men from the east did, God will use them. If you are willing like Mary and Joseph, God will take you places that you can never imagine in your wildest dreams. Don't read into kindness, just receive kindness. And then finally this Christmas, shine bright. Come on, look at somebody and say, shine bright. Shine bright. Oh, you can do better than that, Hicksville and Comac. Come on, shine bright. That was not a pickup line for the singles. <laughs> Baby, you shine bright. In the words of the great theologian Jewel, in the end, only kindness matters. Be kind, even when it is hard. Be kind, even when mistreated. Be kind, even when it makes no sense to anyone else. Be kind, because in the end, the sum total of your kindness will be visible to the rest of the world. The Bible declares this, so don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others, so that the commendable things you do will shine as light upon them. And then they will give praise to your Father in heaven. Shine bright. Don't hide your kindness. Shine at home. Shine at school. Shine at work. Shine in the mall. Shine in the store. And this matters because how you shine impacts those around you. How bright do you want to shine, church? I want to shine brighter than any other Christmas season, than any other person out there. Imagine what would happen if a group of people decided, I'm going to try and outshine you. Yeah. I want to shine brighter than you. I want to do more for God. I want to make a bigger impact. If our world began to do that, there would be much more peace on earth and goodwill toward men. But yet everyone seems today to be trying to outdo everyone in bad things. Let me outdo you in this, and let me outdo you in this. Or they stir up controversy. I mean, you can't even sing Santa Baby anymore. What in the world happened? I don't know what happened in the last 12 months. Last year, it was a hot song. This year, it's a not song. I mean, you start thinking about it. I mean, Charlie Brown? Controversial. Let me tell you what's controversial. Can I get up on an elf box really quick? 
Let me tell you what's controversial. For a culture in Hollywood to start dictating what morality is. I'm just saying. All of a sudden, they're, they're experts on moral choices. Are you elfin kidding me? Wow, that really was great. <laughs> I mean, think about this. I mean, church, get, get this. Let me tell you, 50 Shades of Grey. Woo, you got to see this movie. This is awesome. And all it is is despicable. And now I can't sing Santa Baby. What is wrong with our world today? You've got to be elfin kidding me. But I'm still going to be kind. Even when it's tough. Even when it's difficult. Because how you shine impacts those around you. Shine some joy. Shine some grace. Shine some forgiveness. Shine some peace and hope and goodwill. Come on, church, for the elf of it, be kind to somebody this Christmas. Find somebody that needs your kindness. Find someone that's struggling and hurting and be a voice of hope and a voice of reason and shine bright this Christmas. It should not be a grind to be kind. God has given his grace to us. It should be easy for us to give grace to others. Never forget goodwill is still God's will. Don't read into someone's situations and shine bright. Because this season, as we're more generous and more kind, the world will see the church as a beacon of hope and grace and mercy and truth and goodwill. And as they see that in us, we can change the world by just shining bright. Would you mind just closing your eyes as we pray today?